Death Knight is the most recent class in Hearthstone, having been introduced through the March of the Lich King expansion in 2022. But that means they missed out on a lot of Hearthstone's earlier expansions, 21 of them to be specific. But what if that changed? Join me as I travel back through time to each older Hearthstone expansion and imagine how Death Knight would fit into it all. And let's just dive right into it with the cards for the very first Hearthstone expansion, Goblins vs Gnomes. Goblins vs Gnomes had 8 cards for each class, with 1 legendary each, and I've made some of the cards that could be in this expansion, starting with the legendary Rhyme Fang. Rhyme Fang is a 5 mana 4 7 undead dragon for Blood and Frost, with Taunt, and when you play it, it'll swallow an enemy minion, removing it from the battlefield. And this will not trigger any death rattles the minion has. But then when Rhyme Fang dies, the enemy minion will get spat back out on your opponent's side, but it will be frozen. Goblins vs Gnomes didn't really have a clear theme for each class, but it introduced the mech minion type, so I've also made some mech support for Death Knight. Hold up, that minion has Rush and Reborn, those keywords definitely didn't exist back in Goblins vs Gnomes. Well that's because this video will be following a certain rule set. You see these cards would be made for standard Hearthstone today using modern keywords. In addition to that, each expansion would also get re-released to standard alongside the corresponding Death Knight cards, probably with some time in between them. And I've also made new mini sets that would get released to standard alongside each expansion. You can find a link to that series at the end of the video. Now back to the cards. In addition to mechs, GVG also introduced a new spare part mechanic. These were one cost token spells that could be generated by a lot of cards. With the expansion's reintroduction to standard, the spare parts would receive an update and three new spare parts would be added to the list. You can see these updates to the spare parts on the screen now. The reason I bring this up is because Death Knight would also get their own way to generate spare parts. Now let's move on to the next expansion, the Grand Tournament. The Grand Tournament had 9 cards for each class, but still only one legendary, with the exception of Hunter. So the legendary I made for Death Knight is... Croc Scourgebane. Ready your arms, my Argent brothers! Croc is a 6 mana 6 7 undead with 2 unholy runes that will transform an enemy minion into a 0 1 husk. Croc will then give all the stats the enemy minion lost to the next frail ghoul you summon. Push forward! The Grand Tournament introduced the Inspire keyword, which is a bonus every time you use your hero power, so I made an Inspire card for Death Knight. The Grand Tournament also introduced the Joust mechanic, which would reveal a minion in each deck and if yours costs more you trigger a bonus. I've also made a Jousting card for Death Knight. Alright, the next expansion Blizzard made was... Whispers of the Old Gods. Like the expansion before it, Whispers introduced 9 cards for each class with 1 legendary, and the legendary I made for Death Knight is... Gorath. <laughs> Gorath is a 5 mana 1 7 legendary minion with 2 blood runes. When Gorath is summoned to the battlefield, it will be dormant for 2 turns, but at the end of your turn while it is dormant, it will eat a random enemy minion and gain its stats. And like with Rhyme Fang, this will not trigger any death rattles. Whispers of the Old Gods introduced us to the Old Gods, which were 4 powerful legendary minions. These would of course also return to standard while this set of Death Knight cards are in rotation. Well, all of them, with the exception of Cthun, who would be completely replaced in standard by a new version which has the Titan keyword. You can see all about this new version of Cthulhu in my Whispers of the Old Gods mini set. There will be a link to the whole series at the end of this video. But this Cthulhu would still receive all the benefits of cards that buff him, so I've also made a couple cards for Death Knight that interact with Cthulhu. In fact, I've made a card for each rune that increases your Cthulhu's stats. The next expansion after Whispers of the Old Gods was... Mean Streets of Gadget Sand. Mean Streets had 9 cards for each class, with just one legendary each. The legendary I made for Death Knight is... Saint Skeletor. <laughs> Skeletor is a 4 mana 3 3 undead with rainbow runes, and he has Death Battle, give plus 3 plus 3 to the lowest attack minion in your hand when it perishes, we summon Skeletor. If you didn't catch that, Skeletor will give the lowest attack minion in your hand plus 3 plus 3 when he dies, and then when that minion dies, Skeletor will be resummoned. 
<laughs> mean Streets of Gadget Sen introduced three gangs made up of the various classes. Hunter, Paladin and Warrior became the Grimy Goons, Mage, Priest and Warlock became the Cabal and Druid, Rogue and Shaman became the Jade Lotus. Each gang was represented by three neutral cards that could only be used by the three classes. And when I made my Mean Streets mini set, I decided to add a new game called The Wretched Saints, made up of Death Knight and Demon Hunter. I made three neutral cards for this gang, as you can see on the screen here. These cards all center around a new weapon token called Wretched Blade, that many cards would let you equip. These cards would usually also give the blade a permanent stat bonus, which means that the next time you equip the blade, it will keep the bonus. I already gave Death Knight a lot of support for Wretched Blades in the mini set, but I've still made one more card that supports this archetype for this set. Now, the next expansion that was released was Journey to Unguru. Unguru was the first expansion to introduce 10 cards for each class, with two legendaries each. One of the legendaries were the legendary quest cards. I've of course also made a legendary quest for Death Knight. Fear the Fungi. Fear the Fungi costs 1 mana like all quests and you have to spend 12 corpses to complete it. And then you'll be rewarded with Mushroom. Mushroom is a 5 mana 8-8 eight eight minion that will shuffle 10 poison mushrooms into your opponent's deck. And the poison mushrooms are cast when drawn and will deal 3 damage to your opponent and summon a 3-1 swoonling on your side of the battlefield. Phew, that was a lot of tokens. Journey to Unguru was also the first expansion that really added synergy between the cards in the set. So I made a couple cards that would support this new quest. Journey to Unguru also introduced the adapt keyword. Whenever a minion adapts, you get to choose between 3 different bonuses for it out of a collection of 10. With the expansion's return to standard, I would also introduce 3 new adaptations to this pool, as you can see on the screen here. In addition to that, Death Knight would also get a card that adapts, and I also made this one in the mini set, that both adapts and synergizes with the quest. Like I said earlier, Uguru introduced 2 legendaries for each class, and the other I made for Death Knight is... Ucha the Dead. Ucha is a 6 mana 5 5 undead beast with 3 frost runes. He has taunt, and when he dies, he will deal 5 damage to a random enemy at the end of your next 3 turns. If this death rattle triggers on your turn, it'll deal the damage at the end of that turn and then the next 2 turns after that. Alright, this video has become way longer than I planned, so I think I'll call it here. This was a look into what Death Knight could look like in the first 5 expansions, but I'd very much like to continue this in another video. So if you would like to see this become a series on the channel, make sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe for more custom Hearthstone content. Thanks for watching and I'll see ya next time!